Hey guys, Fosung E Cookie here with another wonderful emergency video. Um, the last time you guys seen me, I said I wasn't going to be back on the air for about a year to a year and a half because I'm going through some transitions with my media and technology. But I just had to put up this emergency video because I went and attended Evo 2014 this year. I competed in Killer Instinct. I didn't do so well. I got knocked out of my pools, but I did come across something very interesting. I managed to interview the director of digital media arts for creating video games at NYU. His name is Frank Lance and he went and did a panel over at EVO 2014 to talk about the EVO scholarship for those who want to go and get into game design. Now he went and did a wonderful panel and at the end of the panel he agreed to do a wonderful interview with me because this scholarship will be for those who have any kind of affiliation with the gaming community for martial arts based gaming. Whether you run tournaments, whether you're artists, whether you just play video games, you have to have some affiliation to actually qualify for the scholarship. Holding that idea, I wanted to see what he thought about if we actually take grant money and scholarship money and actually push it towards professional media digital performing arts. For those such as myself that do this kind of stunt work and performing arts for the Japanese anime community, taking that and pushing it over to the video game martial arts community as we look for new innovative ways to improve EVO over the years to come. And with him thinking this is a wonderful idea, it was great to see the director from NYU, who's in charge of the scholarship, talk about how great this idea is as we can expand the artist alley of EVO for years to come. So without further ado, look at this interview, guys. Let me know what you think about Frank Lance. If you're interested in the scholarship, you can go to nyu.edu edu and stay tuned to the end of the video to actually see I'm going to go put up the information if you're interested in game design to put up um, to apply for this scholarship. In addition, I would love to know your thoughts about the performing arts and doing martial arts demos on a professional level for Evo dressed up as characters in the future. Okay, here we go. Here's the interview. All right. Hi, my name is Hi. Michael Saxon, but I go by the handle Cookie in the video gaming world, also known as Fosung Elizabeth Cookie. I am the founder of Goddess Media and Goddess um, Media of Digital Media Performing Arts. And so um, just recently got my business license. So what I'm doing with the digital media performing arts is those who like to do stunt work and motion capture for video games okay. and on stage um, can go to conventions like this mm -hmm. or video gaming tournaments like this mm -hmm. and actually make a world uh, for that kind of art. Yeah. This is normally just done really at Japanese anime conventions where people dress up as their favorite characters sure. and do skits on stage. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it varies. There are some people that really put in the professional work and what it is for the art and design of becoming a fashion designer mm -hmm. and they'll have these elaborate outfits to really mimic the characters that they see in Japanese animation mm -hmm. and in video games mm -hmm. but you don't ever really see sometimes the professionalism in the actual performing art and that's the angle that I'm pushing okay this is a phenomenon that's big in Japan mm -hmm. but it's something that has not been attached to the video game world here as of yet okay and so it's something as big as Evo where we have the um, the artist out Mm -hmm. I'm thinking in the future, if they're open to innovation, they yeah. can build upon the artist alley, make one part of the art alley for the um, actual drawing arts and the other part for the digital media performing arts. Cool. You know, yeah. and really do live action martial arts demo. That would be amazing. And that would be such a cool thing yeah. at EVO. Yeah. And that's what I've been doing on the side for so long okay. as a gymnast and as a practitioner of mm -hmm. two styles of Shaolin Kung Fu. Oh. Okay. And so. What attracted me here uh, mainly was when I saw the ad for what you do as mm -hmm. a professor mm -hmm. at NYU. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm introducing here Frank Lance. Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And please could you tell us for the camera what it is that you do? Sure. I am the director of the NYU Game Center. So I'm a, I'm a game designer and okay. I've been making games for years and, uh, and I've always been, I've, for the past 20 years or so, I've been teaching uh, game design. And uh, then over the past few years, I've started to focus more and more on my work at NYU and helping to build a program there, which is the NYU Game Center, which is a game design department. Uh, we're in, in the Tisch School of the Arts, and we have a very much kind of an art school approach to game design, which sees games as a cultural form. I mean, they're not, for us, they're not primarily a, a technical domain. It's not about uh, kind of a subset of software development that happens to be games. It's a it's a it's a form of culture, like 
literature or dance or music, and uh, and and that's the way we we approach it as a as a creative discipline and as a as a creative form um, that happens to have a lot of technical skill in it, a lot of. Uh, you know, it has a deep relationship to to computers and engineering, mm -hmm. um, but primarily it's a form of expression. It's a form of culture, and, uh, and and that's our approach. So yeah, so I'm the I'm the director of the NYU Game Center. We have a, a graduate program, uh, which is an MFA in game design. We have a an undergraduate program, which is going to be starting next year, uh, which will be a BFA uh, at the undergrad level. And um, yeah, that's so that's who I am. And I'm yeah, I'm also a practicing game designer. No, that is awesome. A long time ago, um, I thought I wanted to design video games. I was more into the art form of mm -hmm. drawing a lot of the characters mm -hmm. and made portfolios of the of the arts. Good place to start. <laughs> I mean, that's one place to start. There's so many different avenues <laughs> into games, right? Yes. Yeah, There's so many different aspects that go into video games, especially. And I still have my artwork. I still draw, but as I as I you know moved more to the performing arts, I kind of stopped doing the drawing part. But I still respect those who can actually sit down and can um, do not only the graphic designs. To the video games, mm -hmm. but I actually can program. You know, I tried Java and JavaScript. I wasn't mm -hmm. really good. <laughs> so it's a, not far. everyone. It doesn't come naturally to everyone. Like some people have a mindset mm -hmm. where it's very comfortable and they and it just clicks and that way of thinking about uh, kind of algorithmically or thinking about mathematically, <laughs> yeah, precisely. And then other people just don't. Like I'm not a programmer. I know some programming and I can program a little bit, um, right. but uh, that's not my main thing. Uh, uh, and I have a background in, in, in fine arts and visual okay. art. Like I studied painting. That's what my undergrad degree was in. So okay. I totally, you know, I'm, I'm with you. On that. <laughs> it's like that was my avenue into games in a way. It was the, through the visual and through the. I kind of find it almost the discovery of you is almost like bittersweet for myself because <laughs> I'm originally from New York City. Oh, okay. Born and raised, lived in my whole life from the right. Bronx, okay. and moved here in 09, okay. 010. And so, so I you moved. You know Arturo, right? You guys are friends, yeah. We've yeah. been friends for many, right. many years yeah. playing in tournaments, mm -hmm. um, and mainly at CF in its, in its heyday, um, okay. in its highlight before the fall of it and the fall of the arcade world. All right. You know, and so uh, growing up, I never really w had the opportunity to go to many tournaments. So my local scene was either the arcade at, in the Bronx okay. or CF there because right. I was I was in school and you know my mom was very you know academically inclined. You're going to go to school. You're going to sure. get this degree. And so when I had finished high school, I went straight into college, and then I had no breaks. So I graduated with a, um, a BA in um, um, Chinese studies, okay. emphasis on speaking Mandarin, and then studied abroad and was in China for a while, okay. for about a month or two. And then um, my minor was performing cool. arts and theater. And were, were you drawn to, to study uh, the history of China because of an interest in the... Uh, Yes, exactly. Games and, and like animation and stuff or? Well, the interest in continuing the um, legit martial arts because mm -hmm. I said if I'm going to do this on the stage, I really, really cool. want to get a concept of the source of where things come from. And you know, and there's a there's a saying in Asian studies, the three Asian tigers, it's China first, then Japan, then Korea. Uh -huh. But some people will argue, I'm um, second Korea, third Japan. Wow, really? Mm -hmm. Shots fired. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got to put Japan. Well, depending on how you're... You know what, what you're ranking, obviously, but uh, true. They're all good. They're all favorites. Let's put it that way. They are all yeah. favorites. Yeah. You know, and so I felt. You know, more people speak Chinese, and you know, studying no, that. A great thing to study. Yeah. I will go through using China and then go into Japan because you know, as mm -hmm. much as you know, a lot of us get attracted to Japan as a otaku, you know, a fanboy of the of the yeah. games and of the anime, we usually just get attracted to it because of the technology, mm -hmm. and we don't really feel any connection to the Japanese culture and I felt more of the connection to the Chinese culture and so yeah I said, and China uh, China is so big and mm -hmm. it, it's so vast and it has so many different kinds of culture in it and it's, exactly. it's, it's really yeah it's it, and it's rising right now it's it's so important and growing in, in stature and importance globally so it's a great on thing the, to study on the game front you know something to think about um, as you continue um, your work in, in the game world there at NYU um, China's rising um, politically as they change their gaming laws. In fact, um, an MLG Major League Gaming mm -hmm. is actually opening up the, one of their first video gaming stadiums for tournaments really? in Shenzhen. Wow, I did not know that. They That's are, cool. and I guess maybe, I don't know if it's really an attack on Japan or competition for <laughs> Japan, you know, Akihabara mm -hmm. is their prefecture right. for you know anime and gaming on a yeah. competitive level. But now China's saying, okay, we're gonna get in this game too, but mm. we're going to make an entire province. Interesting. 
Wow, that's cool. The game is about to change in the next wow. couple of years. That, yeah, that'll be, <laughs> it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out. That's really cool. And so, you know, having you here, basically I, I wanted to also know what is your take? How do you think um, not only will video game design arts you know, and the performing arts can come together mm -hmm. if they was to make a scholarship or something in that area. Mm -hmm. Imagine um, Juilliard, sure. you know, of the performing arts, yeah. adding a section to that saying, yes. hey, we're at Evo, and these are people that spend hours and hours of mimicking and imitating these characters from video games and say, this is how they look in real life. Look out, yeah. Hollywood. This is how you produce a I mean, real movie. It's it's a really interesting question because when, so we look at games, as a form of culture, as an aesthetic form. It's like movies or, or, or music or dance or something. And, um, but in some ways, it's, it's, they're very interesting and they're very complex because w when you look at the beauty of a game, yes. some of it is in the sort of designed elements that are in the game, and a lot of it is in the performance of the player. Like in some ways, a game can be a context for performance, for like like a martial art. Like a martial art is is beautiful not just because of the rules, you know, that define what you are and aren't allowed to do, which in some ways is the design, the game design of a martial <laughs> art. But it's in you know it's in the beauty of the performance, right? Uh, 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 that the the sort of the depth of, of skill and the expression that comes out and and um, and that's also true of, of competitive games, right? Um, obviously you. We, we come to Evo, we watch these games, uh, yes. uh, partly just, just to see these amazing performances of these people who devoted uh, their their lives to kind of mastering this really complex system and and uh, expressing themselves through this through this game. Um, and so, yeah, we, we're focused on teaching game design in the sense of how, how do you make games mm -hmm. that, that are um, that are interesting and, and beautiful and, and meaningful and deep. Um, but a lot of that is is also in playing games. I mean, you, you you learn to make games by playing games in the same way that if you're a musician, you you can't really separate listening to music and hearing it from making it. it you know what I mean? Like it happens in the, in this uh, um, feedback loop. Yes. That's really important. So so we do um, you know we we do have classes that that involve um, kind of developing a. a a deep play of a of a game or of a series of games, and and thinking about ways in which to incorporate performance and the kind of mm -hmm. stuff that you're talking about uh, in, into our curriculum. Yeah, it's something we we think about a lot. Okay, so now focusing more heavily on the game design and the scholarship portion mm -hmm. of this, you know, um, I see that there was a recipient from last year. Yeah, Tony Cow. Okay, yeah. awesome. Congratulations yeah. to you, Tony. Super smart, talented guy coming out of the. He's a he's a passionate uh, fighting game enthusiast and part of that community. But he's also a really talented visual designer and graphic designer and uh, yeah. So we're expecting great things from him. So is he is he making another of uh, is he making a fighting video game right now? A martial arts based. He's just starting. So he'll next fall he'll be coming into the to the program oh, and okay. he'll do whatever he does. You know he'll he'll do his thing. I mean. Um, I mean, I think he's interested in, in competitive games and, and exploring that, and we'll, we'll see what he does, but it's not like, um, you know, he's obliged to make fighting games necessarily, it's, uh, but uh, he's encouraged to pursue his interest in, in that kind of game, because when you come into the program, you basically, um, that's what we're about. We're about helping people figure out what they want to make, the kind of games they want to make, and helping them get to the point where they can make them and make them well. So, in the game design department mm -hmm. of NYU, yeah. is there a motion capture element there as of yet? Is there a motion capture studio? There's a little bit. There's a little bit. Now, we tend to be, to, to attract people who are a little more part of the independent gaming scene, right? So, mm -hmm. we're less um, about developing the skill set that feeds into large-scale AAA, you know, big-budget game development. Okay. And we're a little bit more immersed in the kind of smaller scale, small, yeah, small teams okay. or individuals uh, making games that are more uh, idiosyncratic or personal or, or driven by a, you know, mm -hmm. a, a design vision um, and less the kind of industrial scale, big-budget development. Motion capture tends to be a little bit more in the AAA world. Okay. Um, but I mean, like everything else, the technology is becoming more 
democratized and, <laughs> and more accessible and cool. we're interested in, in that. Democratized so, is a good word right? too. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a word. I think it's a word. It used to be really ex exclusive. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You can get your hands on, on motion capture technology that's not that expensive anymore and we have the, the space to set that up and, mm -hmm. and play with that and we've got people that are, that are you know, toying with that kind of stuff. Um, and so, yeah, we'd be open to it. Like, if, if we, it's really driven by the student's interest. Like, awesome. we had a student who was really interested in motion capture and, and, and incorporating that into the design process, then we would figure out how to, how to make that happen. Um, yeah. So how long have you been the director of this department? Um, since it started out, which is about six years ago, I guess, six Whoa. or seven years ago. Okay, so um, they know you, you're around and about. Yeah, because I was teaching game design before the Game Center started. I was teaching game design at NYU okay. in another program, ITP, the Interactive Telecommunications Program. And, uh, and so I had already been at NYU teaching game design, and so when they had an opportunity to kind of set up a program that was really focused on game design, they asked me if I would help kind of put that together, so I said, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, so how has your Evo been so far? I love it, man. This is my first Evo. <laughs> it's great. It's it, such a good vibe. It's really, yeah, I'm really feeling it. It's really good. So would you see yourself coming again next year? Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm probably going to come back next year. And any worthy candidates for the, um, for the scholarship this um, time around? It's too early to tell. Um, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll see um, as, you know, as people start applying. Um, you know, we're, we're just now, in fact, it's a, we haven't really seen um, applications for next fall yet. Oh, okay. um, uh, that will, those will start happening in a few months. Um, but as they roll in, we're hoping to see a lot of people check that box that, sa that says, you know, I'm interested in the Evo scholarship. And, mm -hmm. and really all it means is that they have some connection to the fighting game community, or whatever it is. If they're an enthusiastic player, they're a fan, they're someone who helps, you know, organize tournaments or mm -hmm. they're, a, you know, a serious competitor, whatever. Just like someone who is coming out of this community, coming out of this world and with, with an interest in, in um, uh, in this kind of game and and uh, who has a combination of like they have some um, talent and, and they're some some passion and, and some they're able to express their interest and why they want to be a game designer and and also they have a they have a need right they couldn't afford it otherwise I mean that's the purpose of the of the scholarship is to allow people who wouldn't otherwise be able to go uh, to NYU and get a degree uh, to, to give them that chance so that's really why it exists no awesome and I'm and I'm happy I think that had I had something like this existed earlier yep. on when I was in when I was starting college yep. I probably would have went for something go. like that exactly. <laughs> too. you know um, though I don't regret the path that I have gone you know, if it has taken me to many experiences studying yeah. abroad and such. You know, the info of this scholarship, can it be found on the NYU website? Yes. You go to okay. nyugamecenter.com. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's going to be right up there and you can read all about it. And, and that's nyugamecenter.com. Um, you will see that um, underneath. And, um, NYU, it might be NYU Game Center. Dot edu. Dot NYU. Dot edu. Dot edu. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be it. College NYU Game Center. Dot NYU.edu. Nevertheless, um, if you want to just type check NYU out this URL into Google, that's how <laughs> that's we do true. it now, isn't it? Yeah, we use Google. Yeah. Forget URLs. Oh. No <laughs> URLs anymore. Well, I, well, usually colleges are synonymous with the whole edu prefix yeah. at the end yeah. of the URL address. So that's awesome. I'm gonna do make sure that um, by the you know this is by the end of this video we'll have this actually stamped at the bottom, there you go. Yeah. so that all of you guys can click, click right on, on it there. and go right to it. Yeah. You know, thank you. I'm so happy to be doing this with yeah. you, and you're here thank at you. Evo. Yeah, thank you. That thank was you great. so much, and I and I look forward to seeing this next year, and um, and your thoughts on new innovative concepts of bringing it to Evo, especially my thoughts on the performing arts, and hopefully yeah. having a section for that. You know, we'd, um, we'd be happy to, to you know to, to be involved in that and, and keep us in touch and exact, informed and how you're doing that and, and yeah. Most definite. Yeah. Um, hopefully, when they have something on big venues like this, they'll do it more Japanese anime convention style, where not only will people be a station for let's say people designing their video games or currently working on it, there can be a section for them continuously working on it as yeah. they're here at Evo or showing their latest projects. Like they had the indie section, the indie section of video yeah. games yeah. was excellent. And I'm, I'm looking at something called as Yuramasu, Yuramatsuri. Hmm. It's a new fighting game. Okay, I'm seeing that. 2D, it's, um, 
d these people are designing it, or the Japanese were designing it, but there is a European distributor for the game, okay. and it's in the indie section. And I guess they're the only ones actually being the distributors of something that did, they did not create. However, everyone else in the indie section did create and are working and currently programming their own video game as we speak right now. Yeah. You know, and that's a lot of pretty interesting to see. It takes a lot of craftsmanship, a lot of work, and a lot of mental fortitude. I actually have all of my respect because yeah. it is not easy, it's not easy. Dev designing a video work. game. And I understand the pressures of the industry when you want to put all of this depth and then they give you a time crunch because it's like, well, this is how much this is going to make. And so yeah. we need this like right now. It's funny because everything that's hard about making software mm -hmm. and everything that's hard about doing a creative project mm -hmm. and you combine both those things together. It's the hardest thing in the world. But it's also awesome. Yeah. Last it's question. Yeah. Last question. This is interesting. Has anyone from your program ever got picked up by any one of the major companies, say Midway, SNK, N NetherRealm Studios, or we, Capcom? Well, we're still very, we, we're only, our MFA is now, just this year, okay. we had our first graduates. So we're two years old, we've had our first MFA graduates, and they're starting to go out into the world and get jobs and do deals and develop projects. Um, and so there's nothing that I can talk about, but there's stuff that's happening that's interesting, and there's people going on to doing some amazing stuff, so um, that'll uh, be happening soon. You'll, you'll see some of that stuff. Yeah. All right, yeah. awesome, and and thank you guys for joining me on one of my emergency videos. For those who are tuning into my YouTube site, still, I am Fo Sung E Cookie here with Frank Lance of the director of the Game Designer yes. Department. Yes. Thank you. And this is the Fo Sung E Cookie of Goddess Media and Digital Media Performing Arts. I will be seeing y'all soon next year. Awesome. <laughs>